Hi everyone, welcome back to a new video. I haven't done a new video in a long time, so I'm really excited to dive in today and answer some of your self-love questions. But before I dive in, I want to let you know that I launched a podcast called Unlearn Yourself Podcast. It is the place where we talk about you, helping you remember and discover more of who you really are. You can listen to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, or on your web browser using the link in the description box. And if you love the episodes, please go ahead and leave a review and share the podcast with your friends. And one more thing to tell you is that I have something called the treasure chest, which is full of free resources for you to support you on your journey. It includes the planting seeds journaling guide, a journaling ebook, eight soul talk workshops, a meditation guide, and an emotionally empowered audio class, which has a PDF and questions for you to go through. So all of that is available to you for free in the treasure chest. Again, the link to the treasure chest is in the description box. Go ahead and take a look and use those resources to support yourself. So now let's dive into today's video, which is all about answering your questions. So I often get a lot of questions on my videos and I went through and I was like, you know what, I'm going to answer all these questions in a video and these are all self-love related questions. So let's just dive in. So the first question is from Sarah and she asks, how or why would you accept yourself when you know you could be better? I think I get this question the most. This is such, such a good question because it makes so total sense. Like, why would I accept myself as I am right now when I know I could be better? So this is how I like to look at it is you're not working on improving yourself or being better because you're flawed, broken, defected, or that something is wrong with you. That is the approach most people have to self-help, to self-improvement, to self-development. I personally don't like those terms self-improvement, self-development, because it implies that something's wrong with you, you're flawed, you're less than, and you need to develop or improve yourself to be better. So the term I actually like using is spiritual growth, growth in general, or self-actualization, because who you are intrinsically is complete, is whole, is perfect, is absolutely created with wholeness and completeness. There is nothing ever wrong with you. You're not broken, you're not defected, you're not flawed, and there's nothing wrong with you. That pretense that something is wrong with us and we need to improve ourselves is very much an ego trip. We fall into this, uh, this, this, this paradigm, this belief that I need to work on myself because I need to improve who I am. And that's not at all what this journey is about. This journey is a self-actualization journey of you really unlearning all the things that you have learned about yourself through people, through society, through culture, through media, through education, through your family upbringing, through your ancestry. And it's literally about a homecoming. So it's literally remembering your wholeness. It's a remembrance journey. And so when you think of it like that way, what you're doing is you're really allowing yourself self to meet who you are in the fullness and the wholeness and the completeness as you are created to be, will always be and have always been. And from that notion, there's a sense of excitement to uncover and discover the fullness and the potential of who you really are. This is why we do this work. It's literally an unlearning process we're going through to remember who we really are and who we were really created to be. So shift in perspective really allows us to get really excited about the self-actualization remembrance journey instead of seeing it as, I need to fix myself. That is not the case at all. And when I work with my clients, that's the first thing I tell you is that you are whole, you are complete. That is the vision I will hold for you throughout this whole coaching journey. We will go on together and help you remember that because somewhere along the line, you forgot that and you think you need to be better, but that's not the point. You're already who you are meant to be, who you're created to be. You already are that which you are seeking. It's just 
uncovering it, remembering it, and allow yourself to embody. So it's a journey of more embodiment than anything else. That's a really good question. I hope that clears a few things up. So the next question is from Ben, and he asks, what would, what would be three good daily practices to cultivate more self-love? So self-love is not a destination. It is a journey. It is this meeting of who you really are. That is what self-love is. And you meet who you really are in those little ways, in those moments in your life. It's not this grandiose place or destination we arrive at. It's literally meeting yourself as you are in this moment and meeting who you are. So the ways you can really start to cultivate more self-love through practices is to meet yourself in the moment as you are where you are and allow yourself to just fully be there, fully be present in the experience that is unfolding in front of you and within you without judgment, without attachment, without needing it to be any different. That is self-love. Now, if we're looking for tangible things, because we love like getting our hands dirty and getting into action, then I would suggest a journaling practice is a great way to take a really, really deeper understanding and look at the inner workings of your mind, your thought patterns, your self-talk, and really put the, putting that onto paper, offloading that so you can understand the language, the conversations, the dialogues, the stories you are telling yourself constantly. And that will help you deeply understand yourself. So for me, self-love is all about this deeper understanding and meeting myself as who I really am. Another thing you can do is create habits. You know, habits support the way we want to feel. You can use habits to support you in the way you really want to feel. So you want to feel more loving, empowered, connected, nurturing towards yourself. What are some habits that you can implement, cultivate, put into place that support the ways that you really want to feel about yourself? And one of these habits that I personally love doing myself is keeping a promise to myself. When we start keeping promises we make to ourselves that develops self-trust, but that helps us know that we have our own back. It's really active loving ourselves in a very active way that feels really tangible and real. So keep a promise to yourself. It can be a super simple promise, like flossing your teeth or saying an affirmation to yourself in the mirror or recognizing yourself for a good job, recognizing yourself for showing up, it's really anything, meditating, going on a walk. It could literally be what is one promise that I know if I keep to myself, big or small, doesn't matter the size, will make a huge, significant change in my life and will really add to my life and my relationship with myself. And I guess another thing that we could do is to cultivate a tangible form of self-love is to forgive yourself. I have a video on this up here i'll click i'll link it how to forgive myself because forgiveness is loving when you forgive yourself you're really allowing yourself to love who you really are it's a really freeing act to do to yourself because it doesn't it, it, it releases all the burdens that you have put on yourself and it really allows you to just be be easy on yourself and that's so important you know, when we forgive, we, we, we literally are choosing love over blame, judgment, guilt, shame, whatever emotion we're carrying, whatever the experience we're in. We're literally meeting ourselves and making amends and making peace with ourselves. When we make peace with ourselves, we naturally are going to start to feel better about who we are. So those are three ways to start cultivating more self-love. The next question is from Love Life. How do you stand up for yourself and share your opinions with friends lovingly? This is such a good question because this is something I personally have struggled with and have had to learn how to do. Realize that when you're standing up for yourself and you're sharing your truth with somebody, you're not doing it because you need permission from them or you need validation from them, from them for you to share your truth. It is because you have 
owned and accepted this is the truth about you and you're simply just sharing that with somebody else. You're not trying to get them to like you, approve of you, love you. You're literally sharing the permission that you have given yourself and you're now expressing that outwardly. And the best way to lovingly share your opinions with your friend is to look at the tone, look at the energy with which you're sharing from. Is it from a place of needing to defend yourself? Is it from a place of fear? Is it from a place of judgment? Is it what is the energy that you're in when you need to share your opinion with your friends? If there's any tone of defensiveness and you're trying to basically prove something to somebody, it's not going to come across in a loving way because now what that person has done is they've triggered you, they've triggered a wound and you're trying to act or you're acting from that wound instead of looking at it and being like, I'm actually triggered, this is the reason I'm getting defensive, judgmental, critical, or whatever. So look at the tone, and I always like to say is that to share your truth, to share your opinions in a loving way means to come from your heart. It's to be in a loving place within yourself first, and then be rooted in that, and then express outwardly. And, it, it, and you can use statements that say, I feel, I think, those statements make it about you instead of being like, you should do this, you should be like this, you are like that, you made me feel that way. Like Those statements make it feel like you're projecting or blaming somebody else and it creates a conflict. But when you just speak for yourself and you use I statements from your own experience, from your own thought processes, from your own emotional states and speaking how it makes you feel, what, what you think, what you want to share, it's always going to be coming from a loving place. So again, check in with yourself and just ask yourself, am I coming from a place of judgment? Am I coming from a place of needing to prove myself, defend myself? Or am I just coming from a place of my heart? Am I rooted in my heart right now? Am I coming from love? That is how we can start to share opinions with people in our life. All right, the last question is, Annie asks, how can we fall in love with ourselves in order to find a partner at a soul level first of all understand this you don't need to be completely in love with yourself 100 percent be completely in love with yourself in order to find a partner in order to be in a relationship that's not what it takes you don't need to be perfect you don't need to have self-love mastered to find a partner or be in a relationship i'm certainly not there and i'm in a relationship it doesn't work that way. It's a pretense a lot of women fall into. It's like, oh, I have to completely love who I am in order for me to be in a relationship with somebody who's going to love me as who I am. No, 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 no. Again, self-love is not a destination. It is not a place one day we arrive at. As long as we're human, we're going to have ebbs and flows. We're going to be in growths and we're going to be in valleys. We're going to be in peaks and valleys all the time. And it's always meeting ourselves as we are, where we are, that is self-love. It is not always peaches and butterflies and rainbows and being happy all the time and you know, being positive. That's not self-love either. It's literally a meeting of yourself. That is self-love. So you don't have to be perfect, completely in love with who you are in order to attract or be in a relationship. What you're actually doing is that partner will start to serve as a mirror for you to fall deeper into love with yourself because the more deeply you are in love with yourself, the more loving or the more love you will have to give to somebody else and the more capacity you have to love somebody else. It all is reflecting back to how much we love ourselves. If we love ourselves, and that deepens our capacity to love somebody else. And this pretense that we need to have self-love figured out and completely be in love is just a belief. It's a paradigm. It's a perspective that you have right so ask yourself this very empowering question is why do i believe this is true and if i no longer want this to be true what is a belief that i can choose instead that supports me in having what i want which is a loving partnership with somebody which is being in a relationship with somebody you you attract somebody into your life based on your own energy, based on your own vibration, based on what you think you deserve, 
it's not because you have fallen in love with yourself. There aren't conditions to meet before you can be in a partnership. It's literally whatever you believe, whatever you allow, whatever you allow yourself to have. It's, it's a meeting of yourself and knowing that the person I meet will also be imperfect, will have their own wounds, will have their own triggers, will have their own history, will have their own belief system, the things that they need to work through as will I. And that understanding of growing together is what really makes a partnership beautiful because then you serve as mirrors for each other and you can really support each other in remembering and reclaiming, embodying who you really are. So that is not at all true. I hope that clears it up. So if you have any questions about anything I shared in this video, go ahead and put those questions in the comments. Again, I do a video series on my YouTube channel called hashtag ask a life coach. If there's a question you want me to answer in a video, put the question in the comments or just email me using the link in the description box below. I hope this video was helpful. I hope it served you, expanded you, made you think and look at things a little bit differently. And most of all, helped you understand that Loving yourself is meeting yourself as who you are right now. It's a meeting of yourself. Wherever you are in the world, beloved, sending you all my love and stay open. Remember to keep that heart, that beautiful heart of yours, wide open.